So it's been a little while now since my last update to the best gods for every role series and there's been enough of a meta swing to warrant an update for patch 6.6 .6, Neo Olympia. So as always before I get into the picks, I make these every month or so to reflect the current meta and if you want to stay updated and on top of things in a quick and easy manner then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. The picks are based on a combination of my own opinion and experiences in Masters Ranked Conquest along with the opinions of other streamers, YouTubers and of course play in the SPL. So let's dive right into the best mid laners right now. So first up, yeah it's still Merlin. This guy has remained on top of the mid lane meta since his release and it's going to take more than what's been thrown at him to take him down from that spot. The damage he can put out is basically unrivaled by any other mid laner given he has access to 6 damaging abilities plus his ultimate which also does some damage as well. Not to mention his CC is pretty solid as well. Perhaps not the best of every mid laner out there but when you consider his damage output, comparably his CC is pretty good too, especially with Gem of Isolation. He's not the safest mage in the game of course but his blink can be very effective at getting away or dodging abilities really quickly like a Vulcan Magma Bomb for example. And while it can be fairly easily played around like just by following the blink after he uses it, Merlin can also self peel with slows and his insane damage output by just killing someone that dives him instead of trying to run away. He's not without weaknesses but you can't really argue with a 96% pick ban rate. Second mid laner is Hebo. This one is a new face as he's seen a rise in the meta lately due to people favouring really high burst damage comps from their mages. Hebo is still Hebo and he has obvious weaknesses such as his lack of true mobility and his squishiness. Similar to Merlin, his damage output is on the very top end for mages, though where Merlin often puts out a lot of sustained tick damage over the duration of a fight, slowing people with gem of isolation and things, Hebo just nukes someone and then waits for cooldowns to do it again. But having access to the ability to just 3 and ult someone in a fight and say they're deleted and gone from the game is very useful. Even even if you yourself might die for just killing that person. As long as you can get Hebo out of his very early stages in the mid lane, he can and will absolutely destroy your team if not kept in check. And the final mid laner in my opinion is Raijin. He's been sitting on the edge of top 3 for a while now but I think we finally have the evidence and the play rate in the SPL to say Raijin is a top 3 mid laner. His damage output can't quite match the likes of Merlin but Raijin brings a unique skill set to the mid lane especially in the way he can throw his damage from very far away and even over walls while keeping himself very safe with that dash as well. Plus his ultimate is one of the most versatile and powerful ultimates you can have in the mid lane. He can just throw out full burst damage if he has some setup CC already from his team but he can also use the taunts and fears to set himself up or set up the rest of his team as well. A rising ult with 4 taunts is pretty deadly if you don't have beads up as your team can just pump damage into the enemy that's being taunted on top of what rising ult is already doing to them which makes rising a very unique and powerful mid laner right now. Ok so moving on to some junglers. The first in my opinion is a new face being Hunbaz. So this is a pretty meteoric rise to popularity for our monkey friend but the buff he received allowing that monkey to hit the same target multiple times had an enormous impact on what Humbats is capable of. With the boost to his early game clear and of course being able to bounce the monkey between mid and jungle in 2v2 fights. With the early game boost Bats can easily propel himself into the mid and late game where his ultimate is of course just completely busted. Probably one of the best team fight ultimates in the entire game being able to force either multiple sets of purification beads for the team or if the enemy doesn't have beads it's almost just a free kill at that point. Point. And while you are mostly picking bats for his ultimate, the rest of his kit is solid as well and he can definitely fill that bursty assassin role for the team too. This one is more of a personal pick that I really see taking over the meta in the coming weeks and I think we're going to see a lot of bats in the SPL pretty soon as well. So where bats is a more late game focused pick focused around team fights, Ratatoska is definitely earned more squarely at that early game picking people off, but he does that better than almost any other god in the jungle role. Having that 50 power and more than boots movement speed only a few minutes into the game with Acorn is just unmatched by any other jungler or any god in the game really. There's just a point in the game from about 2 to 5 minutes where Rat has Acorn and no one else has full boots and he can just run the game because of the Acorn and if you snowball off of that pressure you have early into landing some kills and abuse his insane global presence from that ultimate it can really result in some pretty easy wins if the enemy team aren't prepared for Rat's insane early pressure from jungle. While he does suffer a little bit in later game team fights, he can still do work with the ult with that knock up and his stuns and things and protection shreds and while he won't do the same level of team fight work that a Hun back would, his early game makes up for that in spades. It's definitely a different playstyle but definitely just as powerful as Bats in my eyes. And the final top 3 jungler in my opinion right now is Raven. This is a somewhat similar pick to Rat in that you pick Raven to snowball the early game into the mid game and run the jungle hard. Raven's single target burst damage is almost unrivaled coming from the jungle really, obviously Rat can match it but that's Rat. Especially with the blink he can easily get in, nuke someone and then either chase or continue fighting with the ult or just use his 2 or the ult to get out safely and continue farming. Raven is one of the best junglers for picking when he wants to fight and dictating the pace of the game. If Raven doesn't want to fight you he has 
has the two and ult to keep himself safe, plus the root and heal if you chase him. But if he does want to fight you, he can definitely hold his own against almost any other jungle pick in a 1v1, and will stomp most mages into the dust early to mid game. Just a very solid jungle pick right now in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with Raven. And I know this is kind of cheating, but I'm just going to throw a quick honourable mention to Sir Ket as a jungler as well. I think Sir Ket is very, very close to top three, like pretty much on par with Raven, but Raven's seeing a little bit more play, so I've given it to Raven. But Sir Ket is definitely powerful as well, so keep your eye out for her. So let's move on to the best solo laners. So the solo lane meta has actually been quite stagnant since the last time I updated this video, so I'm going to cover these picks a little more quickly than usual because they're the exact same as my last video. First up, yeah you guessed it, it's still King Arthur. I'm sure any of you who play Conquest or even play Smite in general know exactly why King Arthur is the best solo laner and is going to need more than a few nerfs to bring him down. 6 abilities, 2 ultimates with 20 second cooldowns, complete and utter abuse of gladiator shield, tanky as all hell, ridiculous amounts of damage, there's not much Arthur does poorly beside his weak early few levels. Once he gets out of that levels 1 through 5 ish, it's almost impossible to lose with this god and I have to put him here regardless of how much it pains me that he's still the best solo laner in the game. Bologna is solo laner number two for me. I think Bologna is possibly the most underrated solo laner right now, and that's saying something because most people think she's really good. But in my eyes, she's better than really good. She dominates almost every other solo lane matchup with her insane clear and auto attack boxing potential. Contests Totem really well due to her great auto attack damage, being able to heal off of it with Scourge and also disarming the enemies if they are trying to contest the Totem. But she's not just a lane bully for the sake of being a lane bully either. Bologna's teamfight potential is insane if used well to zone out carries with block stacks and disarms, plus that ultimate can be used as a great engage or a follow up engage. Bologna is in my opinion the best solo laner right now that's not Arthur, though that is my personal opinion. A lot of other people might say it Achilles. Which brings us to number three, that being the man himself, Achilles. I think with the nurse he's taken recently, he's going to come down quite a bit and that might bring him out of top three, but for me, I think he's still there. Achilles is one of only a few gods that can box toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bologna in lane and come out ahead if you're a good player and use your abilities correctly. The damage Achilles can put out, especially since it's all really bursty damage, is quite hard to match coming from solo. Even Arthur doesn't do as much burst damage as Achilles does, he does more sustained damage. Achilles is also a very flexible pick, given he can play a really good jungle on top of his solo lane and can even be flexing to support if you really want to do that and it fits your team comp. That execute is just always going to be valuable. Alright, on to the second to last role, supports. So firstly, it's Terra. She's not really been making huge waves in ranks, but as of late in the SPL, Terra's been seeing a huge boost in play and win rates, and I can see why. Her CC is so strong, especially in that massive AoE route to initiate a fight and then follow up with the wall stun. But it's really Terra's ultimate that you're picking her for. Having access to such a massive teamfight swing with the damage boost and damage reduction, plus of course the heals and massive damage output this ability can provide, is just insane. If you can hit this on multiple allies and enemies, the fight is almost over on the spot so long as your team capitalise correctly on the effects of this ability. Great CC, peel, a little bit of healing as well, and an insane teamfight ultimate. What more do you really need from a support right now? Alright, support number two in my opinion is the World Serpent himself, Jormungandr. Now I'm very aware that Jorm sees a lot of play in solo as well, and even some in mid, but from my experience and looking at other games, it seems like he finds the most success in support, so that's where I'm putting him for this video. His lane pressure is almost uncontested in duo lane right now, especially with a lot of assassin supports being phased out. Those autos plus his abilities in general do so much damage and can almost run duo lane by themselves early on, and having a ton of pressure to get your ADC ahead early is really valuable right now. But Yorm also has solid team fighting presence, with slows galore, a solid knock up and low key detector, plus that ult which is probably the most disruptive ultimate to play against in a team fight because not only does it knock you up multiple times, it also messes with your camera and stops you being able to see exactly what's going on in the fight because there's this massive ass snake in your face. Overall, Yorm just seems super solid right now, not just in support, but that's where he seems to be shining the most, so that's where I'm putting him. And the final support is a new face on the scene, that being Horus. So this one is more of a wildcard pick, as we've had very little time to play with and truly evaluate Horus at a high level, but personally, I think he's going to have a huge impact on the support meta, and he's definitely more of a support than he is a solo laner in my eyes. His base kit is so ridiculous, with two strong CCs, decent wave clear, sustain for him, his ADC, and his minion wave, allowing you to sustain in lane and also push more effectively as you can heal your minions. And while his ultimate can be somewhat awkward to use a lot of the time, I think once people get the hang of it and it maybe gets a few tweaks, it could potentially be a game breaker of an ultimate, especially on competitive teams with full comms. As I said, don't necessarily just take my word for this one, but I think Horus is going to be a top 3 support going forward. And finally, last but not least, the ADCs. So in a similar case to Merlin and Arthur, I have to put Freya as a top 3 ADC. The evidence speaks more than my opinion really can on this one. Personally, I think she's not top 3 anymore if you know how to play around her. 
But she sees significant play in the SPL where she has the highest ban rate of any god, as well as in ranked, and especially in low levels, she still dominates even despite all of her nerfs. I'm not going to go too much into why I think Freya is strong here, because she's been this way for months, and I'm sure almost all of you have seen her in action and know why she's here. Maybe next time I update this I can finally take her off of the list, but for now she remains top 3 just based on stats alone. ADC number 2 however is a new face to the scene, that being Kronos, who similar to Bats has seen a pretty meteoric rise from balance to seeing significant high level play. Now I'm not really on board with the ridiculous Bumba's Mask hyperspeed builds people are trying to make work, I think Kronos is just strong because of his insane hyper carry potential and relative safety. Not because of these new builds people have been trying with, I think that's a meme and it will get phased out pretty quickly, although I could be completely wrong with that. For me though, Kronos is just the quintessential ADC hyper carry. He can shred almost anyone with a hybrid attack speed and power build, and can even get access to items like Celestial Legion Helm and Dynasty Plate Helm with him being a mage, which helps him in the early game against those physical hunters. Not to mention Kronos is the ultimate tower and phoenix shredder because he still gets the 35% bonus structure damage for being a magical god, despite his auto attack tendencies which just allows him to melt any structure he wants in a matter of a few basics, which is invaluable when sieging or just trying to close out a game in general. Kronos is a bit of a rising star that I personally see doing very well in the coming weeks, but as always don't just take my word for this, have a look around and see what other people are saying to get a full picture. And finally, the last ADC that's top 3 in my opinion is Jingwei. Though this spot was heavily contested by Hachiman and of course Jubilanke, but I think after his nerfs, Expel is going to drop off from top 3. Jingwei has been solid for a long time now, mostly because she's the safest carry in the game, while also being able to dish out major damage with that built-in attack speed steroid and crit. People have even been going regular pen and kin size builds of Jingwei without any crit and still fragging, which I really think speaks to the power of this god as a whole. But I guess that could also just be the fact that tank shredding is really important right now, and having that kin size type of build is just superior to crit. But either way, Jingwei is doing very well for herself in this meta and is my third pick for the ADC role. Alright, so that's about it for me for the top 3 gods for each role updated for patch 6.6 .6 and the start of Split 2. If you guys did enjoy, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when I update this series again, and share it around with your friends if they're looking for a quick conquest meta overview for ranked or even just casuals. But that's all from me. I will catch you guys in another video later. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.